What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken. Today, guys, we are here for the third episode of Physical Media Lives. Physical Media Lives, episode three. And I'm telling you all right now, this one is going to be epic. I have a lot of stuff uh, to show off today. But in case I haven't, uh, you know, let you guys know, if you don't know what this is, if you haven't watched yet one of these episodes, I've done two of them already. These are basically just very long form haul videos. I like to save up everything that I'm getting in and do these, you know, once or twice a month just to show you everything that I'm getting in the collection. I am showing you that physical media lives through all of these incredible uh, pickups, Blu-ray and 4K pickups that I am acquiring in the collection. And I also may do some reviews in here as well. So I may not do a standalone review of a particular release, but I will talk about it if I watch it in the month that I get it in this video today. Now, one thing that I did introduce in last uh, month's video of Physical Media Lives was time codes. Now, I will be putting time codes in the description and I will also try to put them in the comments section as well. But if you're watching this, you should know that I will be doing a uh, time code. So if you want to look down there and see which uh, releases interest you the most, you want to hear me talk about, you want to hear me unbox my, uh, or see me unbox my vinegar syndrome stuff, my subscriber mail stuff, because I've got that umbrella, then you can click, you can go to each individual thing that you want me to talk about. And you can go, you can go out of order. You can go watch my vinegar syndrome unboxing Then you can go back and watch my aero video stuff. You can do whatever you want. That's why I'm doing the time codes, guys, with this because I heard the criticism in the first one. It's too long, Ken. And I look, I'm not going to try to shorten these. I'm not editing these. I'm not cutting anything out. So this is just what it is. Uh, so use those time codes um, if you want to go to the specific sections of, of the stuff that I'm talking about. But anyways, guys, uh, like the video and then subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We talk about physical media on this channel, Blu-rays, 4Ks. Owning the movies that you love, all that stuff there behind me every single day. So if you like that kind of thing, hit that subscribe button. And then, you know, like the video, comment down below, guys. What have you been picking up? Just, uh, you know, what have you been watching? What have you been thinking of all these physical media releases that we've been getting? Um, are you going to purchase any of these? Some of these are early review copies that I have in, and I will be linking them down below. Amazon links. So if you want any of these releases that I talk about, if they sound good to you, use those links down below. I would definitely appreciate that. But with that all out of the way, all that housekeeping stuff, let's go ahead and get into all of these releases. I've got a lot of stuff to show off, guys. I need to quit wasting time. Let's start with VHS 85 on Blu-ray. This came out from RLG Entertainment. So this was a Shudder original, and this is the sixth movie in the VHS franchise. I think this came on Shudder back in 2023. I always wait. I don't have Shudder, guys, because... I, I just figure that most of the stuff that comes on Shutter that's worth a crap, it's going to get a physical release from RLJE, and I'll just pick it up when it comes um, on Blu-ray. I know When Evil Lurks is getting ready to come out. I'm excited to get that one. So VHS 85, look, I'll continue to collect all the, the VHS movies. I love the first two. Like, they're two of my favorite horror movies, like, of all time. I watched them on Netflix uh, shortly after they came out, I remember back in 2014, 2015, and I just loved both of them. So I'll, I'll keep watching these movies, but I'll be honest, even though this one is in my birth year, it's eight, 1985, I, I didn't love this one. Honestly, like I would say it's the worst VHS movie since VHS Viral, which everyone says is the worst of the franchise. But honestly, like uh, this one kind of gives it a run for its money a little bit, at least in my mind. I did not enjoy this one. It's not that it was poorly done. Like there were some sequences that were very well done. It's just not, it's not my kind of horror, I guess. It's, it doesn't even feel horror in certain aspects. There's a lot of, a lot of the sequences end in like, I don't want to spoil anything. So maybe I shouldn't say this. There's a lot of gunfighting. It's like, I don't watch VHS to watch gunplay. I'll watch John Wick for that. Like I want some horror in my VHS movies. And there is one really great uh, sequence in this one that takes place. It's like a news broadcast team in a foreign country. There's an earthquake. That's a really good one. That was my favorite one of this movie. Everything else just feels so convoluted and and it just it doesn't have a good payoff to any of the stories and there's like this really creepy uh, little boy in the beginning the opening shots and you think it's going to go somewhere interesting and creepy and it doesn't it just goes into the most conventional direction you could possibly imagine there's one where all of these kids are getting sniped on this boat 
Um, and you think that's going to go in a really interesting direction. They even cut away from it for a while and then return to it later. And it just has the most, I don't know, it just has the most, I, I don't even want to say basic ending because I didn't even predict that was the way it was going to end. It was just like, but they set up this particular ending that it was going to go this way and it should have went this way, but they decided to subvert your expectations and give you something that was just so bland and boring and uninteresting. And I was just like, why didn't we get the actual payoff that we should have got with that story? I don't know. There was just several things that frustrated me about this one. I just didn't think it was great. But look, the Blu-ray looked nice. I, I think the movie had a nice look to it. And none of it felt 80s. That's the biggest crime. Like, it, it was set in the 80s, but like none of it felt 80s. Like I didn't get any of the 80s vibes with this one. But anyway, uh, that's my review. Uh, but on the back, you got some images. You got some special features here. Casting list. We'll take this out of there. Hey, we got a slip cover, guys. We got a slip cover with this one. We didn't get one with uh, 99. We did with v 94. Uh, but show you without the slip cover. Show you the back. Go ahead and open this sucker up. You got a nice little, you know, shutter AMC card. You got some disc art on the inside. Doesn't look like they have any reversible cover arts. But uh, yeah, there you have it, guys. VHS 85. I can't say I recommend it. I'll, I'll keep, I'm not glad, I'm not upset that I bought it. I'll continue to buy these probably until the end of time. Um, unless they just start getting really bad. But this is honestly one of my least favorite of the franchise. And if you're just a casual fan of VHS, I can't say I recommend it. Um, I also got the Hunger Games Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes Steelbook in from Lionsgate. So let me show that off for you, to you guys. I still got it wrapped in plastic, so I obviously have not watched this one. Um, but I, I'm lukewarm at best when it comes to the Hunger Games franchise. I, I like the first movie. The second one, I'm not a huge fan of. But we recently started watching them uh, with the kids. And they really enjoy them, so we're going to finish the last two and then probably watch this one together as a family. But look, guys, this is a beautiful steelbook. I haven't seen the movie. People are big fans of her, right? That girl on the back, Rachel Ziegler, whatever her name is. Isn't she really popular on the internet? I feel like I'm hearing. I'm joking, obviously. Uh, but let's take it out of the slipcover right here. You know, it's the Lionsgate steelbook treatment. Like, you know, it's going to be beautiful. Look at that. Look at that artwork right there. Just awesome. And uh, look, you got the spine right there. I'm still getting used to doing unboxings with this like big mic in front of me. Let's let me lower that down just a little bit. All right, so I'll open this up, put the digital code to the side. I'll probably give that away at a future date. And you got some cool, nice disc art right there. And we'll take the discs out because I like to give you all the full unboxing treatments. And uh, this is a pretty good. Uh, this is a pretty cool interior artwork. It reminds me of Fallout, to be honest. But, uh, and I'll show you the steelbook in all of its glory on the back. Really nice steelbook. You get a Blu-ray, you get a 4K here. You know, Lionsgate isn't skimping on the, you know, on the Blu-ray and the 4K yet like some of the other studios are. So you got to give them a little bit of credit for that. And like I said, you get the digital code as well. I'll definitely be watching this, but I have to watch, uh, what is it, the Mockingjay Part 1 and Part 2 and that whole deal. Why is this not shutting? Sometimes these steelbooks, guys, they just... Um, they don't want to shut, and I don't know why. It's ridiculous. All right. So, boom, boom, boom. Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I, I don't know if it's still available. It may be in your local Walmart. It may still be available to pre-order on the Walmart website. Uh, we got Leviathan on 4K. I did a whole review of this, so go check it out if you didn't. But I just like to go over this stuff again. Um, really good 4K, though. Again, check out my review for more in-depth thoughts. And uh, I also got Brev Beverly, I almost said Beverly, uh, Beverly Hills Cop 3 on 4K with Eddie Murphy. Um, I watched this, guys. Look, I, I'm not the biggest Beverly Hills Cop fan. Um, I, I enjoyed this one, though. I, I really kind of enjoyed it. I need to go back and rewatch the first one. Maybe I was too hard on it. Uh, maybe I would enjoy it if I watched it now, but uh, so far, I'd say that the second one's still my favorite. Then I would go the third one, and then I would say the first one. Um, just off of memory, again, I need to go back and rewatch it. It's been probably six years since I've seen it. Um, I don't know. I enjoyed the uh, theme park setting. I, I get why people don't like this. It is not great. It's not one of the greatest action films of all time. There are parts of it that are very silly and very goofy. All the villains are just very one note and silly. 
Um, but I, it's fun. I like Eddie Murphy in it, and it's uh, it, it looked great on 4K. I thought this 4K actually looked really good. It definitely looked better than Part 2, but again, I don't have the 4K Part 1, so I need to go back and get that one. I just have that one on Blu-ray still. Um, but I thought the 4K here by Paramount looked really good. And uh, I believe there are some uh, special features here as well. And uh, boom, boom, show you the inside of the case. You do get a digital code here, but Paramount's getting stingy, guys. They're getting stingy. They didn't used to do this, but you only get a 4K here. You do not get uh, the Blu-ray, but just your basic generic artwork there. Um, I like the cover art on this. I, I think that uh, you know Paramount did a good job with this. And yeah, I, I enjoyed the movie. I know people are going to give me some hate in the comments. Section. I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty fun. Um, and it looked really good on 4K. There was a lot of great colors being in the amusement park. And I just thought it looked really, um, not like overly glossed out or anything. It just looked really nice. It looked really nice on 4K. That's what I'll say. Uh, anyway, let's talk about Dark Man from Scream Factory. This also came out in the month of February. Guys, I've decided that I'm probably, because I'm doing these types of videos now, I'm probably not going to do the tier list videos anymore. I know there were some fans of those, but they honestly didn't get a ton of views anyway. Um, and I'd rather just talk about these releases and these videos like this. And I feel like if I do a tier list, I'm just going to be going over the same stuff again. Um, but Dark Man on 4K, I did watch this, check this one out, and this is a re-release uh, from Screen Factory on 4K, so you have all the same special features here, and you got, uh, I had no idea Frances McDormand was in this movie, I remember, I watched this when I was a kid, but I did not remember her, um, and Liam Neeson, so the cast in this movie is like freaking incredible, but this is a new 4K restoration from the original camera negative, Dolby Vision, approved by director Sam Raimi. Um, and director of photography, Bill Pope. You got new audio commentary with a filmmaker. And Darkman super fan, Josh Rubin. So you get a new audio commentary here. And But I think that's the only new stuff that you get. All this other stuff is just uh, past archival features from the previous Screen Factor release. Uh, but there's honestly like really great features here because they got Francis and they got Liam to come back and talk about this film back in 2014 when they released the Blu-ray. But just the classic poster art there. Really cool poster art. I like Dark Man. I don't love Dark Man. I, to be honest with you, I had better memories of this movie. I had, I had memories of this movie that were better than the actual movie was on the revisit. It's very campy. It's very cheesy. And because it came out in 1990, you can you can tell that Sam Raimi was trying to do Tim Burton. He was trying to do uh, his version of Batman 1989. So it just comes off as a copy of a better film. Um, so. I enjoyed some parts about it, but it is Liam Neeson is not very good. Like there's some moment, like the moment where he just starts crying and his lair is just very silly. Um, so it's uh, it's fun enough, um, you know. It's and you can definitely see like the origins um, of what Sam Raimi would go on to do with the Spider-Man films. Like there's a little bit of that DNA in here as well, so that's cool uh, to see. I like the movie. Um, I just don't love the movie, if that makes any sense. Let's take this out of the slipcover, guys, and show you all the inside. And uh, as far as the 4K presentation, I thought it looked really good, really solid. There are some special effects that don't quite hold up, so those don't look the greatest in 4K. But it was still a solid uh, 4K transfer, I would say. Screen Factory usually does a good job on their 4Ks. I'm excited for them to do uh, Killer Clowns, because I think that one's going to look really great on 4K. So, yeah. Dark Man. I'm not. I'm not sad that I got it. I got a Blu-ray release. It's not the Screen Factory one, but it's one I found at Big Lots a number of years ago. But I'm happy to upgrade it. Dark Man from Screen Factory. I got Wonka on 4K. Got this in from Warner Brothers. Watched this with the wife. We did a review on our channel, Married with Media. So if you're not subscribed to Married with Media, I always leave that link down below. We did a full in-depth review on this movie. I thought this movie was was pretty good. It was okay. It was okay to pretty good. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, though, I thought did a good job, a serviceable job um, as Willy Wonka. He was not Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka. I, If I think of it this way, Timothy Chalamet's Willy Wonka is an adaptation of the novel, and he, it's not a it's not a prequel to the 1974 uh, 73 film. It's not a prequel to that film. It's its own thing. It's 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 its own adaptation of that source material. If I think of it that way, this is not a young Gene Wilder. This is just a younger version of Willy Wonka. 
and I thought that he did a good job interpreting that character from the novel, uh, you know, while you know, while paying respect to the original as well. There are some nods to the original movie, but it feels like its own thing, and I think he did a good job. I just, I'm so sentimental about that first, that original movie. I hate Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with Johnny Depp. I just hate that movie so much. I saw it in the theaters once, and I never want to watch it again. It just, it made me cringe so bad. And this was not that. This was not that. This was a perfectly enjoyable family film. A one that you can sit down with your wife, your kids, your husband, your kids, um, whatever. Your whole family and watch and enjoy. And it's perfectly harmless. There's there, This does not ruin the original by any means. And to be honest, like I would be... Uh, you know, happy to see a sequel to this because where it leaves off, like, I'm like, oh, I want more of that. I think that would be pretty fun. Directed by Paul King, the same guy who did the Paddington films. And as far as the 4K, I thought it looked really great on 4K. Warner Brothers usually does a good job with their 4Ks. And this had so many, you know, bright, vivid colors and the candy colors and all that stuff. It all looked good with that HDR. Um, but, you know, talking about the aesthetic and the setting of this world... It really reminded me a lot of Hugo. It just had that like older English like setting. Um, so it just reminded me of Hugo when I was watching it. Hugo was a great 4K as well. And this was a really good 4K. And you got some special features here. Also unwrapping walk up Paul King's vision. So some little featurettes here. Some good features to dig into. I didn't even hate Hugh Grant as the Oompa Loompa. I thought he was pretty fun in the movie as well. So all in all, you know, like I said, we did a full review on our channel, so I got more thoughts on it. Uh, but it was good. And you know what? I'm going to give you all the digital code. I don't believe I've given, uh, given away the digital code yet. So if you want the digital code to Wonka, here you go. And uh, let me see if I got uh, a pen in here. I like to, when I give away the digital codes, I like to mark that I gave them away so I don't try to give them away again. Does that make any sense? I told you all, I'm, I'm gonna be leaving everything in, so. And let me take a drink real quick, guys. These these videos are always very rough. Always very rough. But this is just, you know, hanging out with me, going through some physical media, and uh, having a good time. We got Punto, what is this? Punto Rojo? Um, this is an MVD visual release, they sent this to me. And uh, I don't know anything about this. So we're just going to quietly unbox it. And I'm going to say a few things about the packaging. And then we're going to move on. And um, yeah, it looks like a, like a type of a thriller from what I'm looking at the back. So that's cool. Boom, boom. Let me know if you know anything about this one. You just got some, you know, some discard on the inside. Uh, no reversible cover art or anything like that. But... I think this is available either now or it's available next week. I know it's coming out soon, but anyway, I'll, I'll be leaving all the, the prices and the dates and stuff down there for some upcoming stuff. But Punta Rojo, um, Punto Rojo, a film by Nick Loretti. There you go. Check it out. All right, let's get into, I've got some umbrella stuff to get into. We have, these are all the December releases. I know I said I was going to do like separate videos and reviews of the Umbrella stuff. And I will start when I get the, I've got the January and the February stuff. Oh, my TV went out. Um, I got the January and the February stuff on the way um, right now. So when I get the January stuff, I will do an in-depth unboxing reviews of that. February, I'll do in-depth. But I just need to knock December out, guys, because it's been sitting on my shelf for way too long. And I need to, I need to show it off and unbox it. But uh, we have Rib Spreader. That's the first one I'm going to show off. I don't know too much about Rib Spreader. I feel like it's a newer film. Um, but uh, I thought uh, Umbrella was starting a new line. It was like Monster Mayhem or something line. And I thought this was supposed to be part of it. But I'm not seeing that on here right now. Uh, but let's show you the back right there. If you guys can see that. All right. And we'll open it up. We got a disc on the inside, as always. There is reversible cover art, but it looks like the same artwork. They just do the rating, you know, the Australian rating at the bottom. And then when you reverse it, they take it away. So it's good they give you uh, that option. But, yeah, I don't know too much about this one. Looks like some kind of a monster vampire creature film. 
Um, so I'll check it out at some point. We also got right here, guys, Stigmata. I am really looking forward to watching this one. I have not seen this movie in quite some time. I think this one has Patricia Arquette in it, um, if I'm not mistaken. So I remember seeing this when it came out. Isn't this from like 1999 or something? It's an older film. Um, but I was excited when they announced this one because I would want this in the collection. I may have this on DVD, actually. Uh, and this is a beautiful edition right here from Umbrella. Big box set edition. It is, I think they only did 300 of the big box sets. They might not even have them anymore, guys, because it's been so long. But uh, I'll try to link them down below if they still got them. But if not, just you can get on the Umbrella website, Diabolic, and import these. These are all Australian releases, Umbrella. And even though they say Region B on the back, all of Umbrella stuff, at least so far, for me has played on my regular Blu-ray player. I haven't had to use my region free player or anything like that. So, you know, that's always a plus. But taking it out of the box, well, let me take this J card off, off here real quick. See if there's any artwork on the back. Let's put that over there. And it says the messenger must be silenced. Yeah, I'm excited to watch this one. Nice slip cover artwork right there. Look at the artwork on that. That is some nice stuff, guys. Really nice stuff. Umbrella does a great job. They really do. And that's the original poster art. You got Patricia on the back. I imagine there'll be some new features in here, some past features, maybe from a former release. But uh, open this up. You got some disc art right there. You got a poster on the inside of this new artwork and the older artwork. And uh, I think this has reversible. But yeah, just like I said, it just replaces the uh, just replaces the rating. Bam. Stigmata. Stigmata. I'm excited to watch that one. And uh, let me let me show you all these cards. Oh, this has Gabriel Byrne in it as well. So that's cool. From uh, Usual Suspects and Hereditary, of course. Some cool stuff on the cards. Oh my goodness. Looked like she was shooting fire. I was like, is that what kind of movie this is? All right. Lots of stuff to show off with Umbrella, guys. As there generally is. But let me put this back in here. Stack this over there, but yeah. Oh, did I even show you? I didn't even show you all the booklet. God, I'm already slipping. It's early in the video, and I'm already slipping. But yeah. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at all the booklet goodness. Oh, all kinds of stuff about the movie. Umbrella, guys. It's, uh, you know, um, it's Arrow Video, Umbrella, um, Second Sight, Vinegar Syndrome. Like, they're all in competition with each other as far as like packaging just always do great work i also got monkey shines so i actually just watched this before i came in here to film monkey shines is and you got the j card right here if you want to see everything this one i think was 400 limited to 400 um boom boom and uh got some cool stuff on the back but the artwork on this is like freaking incredible. Like I love the artwork on Monkey Shines. I think that's super awesome. But Monkey Shines is a movie that I remember seeing the poster for. I remember seeing the VHS for in the video store like all the time. But I never got it because I thought it looked stupid. I was like the monkeys killing people. I was like that looks dumb. So I never got this. And when I got a little bit older, I realized it was directed by George A. Romero. And uh, it's taken me a while, but I finally got a chance to watch it with this Umbrella release. So this was a first time watch. And the movie's fun. It definitely has a charm to it. You know, you got a guy who gets in an accident at the very beginning of the film. Then he's a paraplegic. And there's this program that helps uh, people, paraplegics, by giving them monkeys to wait on them hand and foot. And there's this one monkey that's been inserted with like super smart serum. And he's like very intelligent. And the guy starts to catch on that the monkey may be a little bit too intelligent. I think the monkey, who is named Ella, falls in love with him and starts doing stuff to other people that's getting in her way, basically. And um, it, it's, a, it's a fun movie, though. It is a little bit silly. Some of the performances are a little silly. 
I didn't find all the kills to be that creative. I, I expected a little bit better here, considering it was George A. Romero, but it was fun for what it was. And the box set is really super cool. Um, but on the inside, you have some, I think that's the older poster artwork. Then you got some stuff on the back as well. Take it out of here. And that's the original poster guys and that that's not what the original that's not what the monkey looks like in the movie they make it look like a toy that's killing people that that's not what the monkey looks like in the film just wanted to tell you all that um but we'll go ahead and show you the disc right there you got a nice poster here on the inside as well of the new artwork and the old artwork bam bam and uh yeah, so very cool. And experiments in fear. And you also got some some cards in here as well. There is a very good scene between her and him uh, that involves some love making, and he's a paraplegic. So use your imagination what happens in that scene. So probably the best scene of the movie. <laughs> Oh my goodness, the parrot attacking him scene. That was that was pretty goofy. Um, all right, Monkey Shines. I'm not trying to crap on Monkey Shines. It was fun. George A. Romero, of course, classic director. Um, you got some really good stuff in this booklet right here. Some stuff to dig into. I need to start reading these booklets a little bit more because there's all kinds of great information on these films. Oh, Alan Tudyk was in this film as well. Um, which is kind of interesting, probably before he became a bigger name for sure. All right. So that's all the umbrella stuff and let's go ahead and get into the arrow video stuff. I got some new, a lot of this stuff is upcoming, but I did get my, uh, replacement disc for the awakening, um, of the beast and the end of man. And I think it was the awakening of the beast that had the problem with the, sub the subtitles dropping. So if you ordered this from arrow video, you should be getting your replacement disc, but if not, you have to get on their website to request it if you ordered it from somewhere else. Uh, if you look up Arrow Video on Instagram, they have all the details. I know I talked about it in a previous physical media report, but I did get that replacement disc in. So now that I got that, I, I'm excited to dive back into the Coffin Joe set to finish it. And both of these are coming out soon from Arrow Video. We have Dark Water on 4K. I think this one comes out March the 19th. It could come out March the 12th. I'll put the date down there. I don't even know why I'm trying to figure it out. But really cool artwork on this one. This is the Japanese version of Dark Water. I know there's an American version with Jennifer Connelly. I haven't seen either. Uh, so this will be the first one that I watch. But uh, this is a 4K and I think that Arrow has done a Blu-ray of this before, so I imagine that it has all the same features here. I may do a review for this one, or I may talk about it at some point down the road, but really cool release from Arrow Video. And uh, on the inside, you've got a booklet. Boom, boom. you got some disc art. And uh, which I think is the original poster, maybe because you flip this and you get the uh, original poster of Dark Water. So, yeah, I'm excited to watch this one. I feel like I've heard some good things about it uh, for sure. Dark Water it comes out soon. All right. This one I'm actually really excited to check out because I do love Westerns. Uh, the Shootist with John Wayne. And from what I've heard, this is John Wayne's last film. And uh, this is from, when did this come out? I saw 1901, but I know it didn't come out in 1901. I always forget where the uh, actual like dates for these movies are. 1976. There we go. 1976, John Wayne's last film. So John Wayne did his last film almost 50 years ago now. What a classic actor. He was in movies in the 20s and the 30s, I believe. But this artwork is freaking awesome. Like, that is great artwork. Who directed this film? Uh, Don Siegel. Okay. And uh, this is new to Arrow Video, so I imagine they got a lot of new, uh, cool new special features in here as well. So I'm excited to dig into this one. This is very heavy, though. This is very heavy. What did they put in here? Um, show you the front. Show you the... Show you the or, that's the front. That's the back. 
open this up. Okay, so we got art cards in here, and but but it's the booklet. Like the booklet's making it pretty heavy. You got a nice little booklet in here. I'm excited to to see uh, older John Wayne. I'm trying to show off this booklet, guys. Boom, boom, boom. And you got plenty of cards to check out. There's no shortage of cards in any of these box sets. And they got some stuff on the back as well. And oh, we got a poster in here. So we got a booklet, cards, and a poster. That's why it's so heavy. They might as well just done a freaking box set with this. That artwork's incredible though. I love that artwork. That is really great artwork. I'm excited to watch this one though. That is the shootest. And let's flip the... And this is a Paramount film. Boom. Paramount film, The Shootist. Definitely excited to check that one out. It's cool to see... Uh, oh, Dino De Laurentiis presents uh, production as well. So that's cool. It's cool to see Arrow Video dive more into westerns. I want to see him do more westerns because I love that genre. Uh, new in from Radiance, and uh, I think this one's due out within the next couple of weeks, but this is the Bounty Hunter Trilogy. So this is another box set from Radiance Films. Really cool box set. Like, this feels very durable. This is almost like the same durability as the Umbrella releases. Uh, so cool to see Radiance Films do more box sets. And this looks like a uh, Kung Fu Trilogy of sorts. So I'll go ahead and show you all the little card, insert card they have wrapped around. Or outserts, I guess is what you would call it. All right. And they usually have what country? Yeah, so this is Japanese. Yeah, three films, 1969 and 1972. Some great artwork on this one. So yeah, if you're into the Kung Fu stuff, the sword play stuff, samurai stuff, this might be that type of stuff, that that type of movie, not not kung fu, but like swordplay. Um, so we have the Fort of Death, right here, and Eight Men to Kill. So you got two movies in this uh, in this pack, both on the same discs, both on the same disc. But I'm sure that they're, I mean, they're all Blu-rays, so probably two K scans. Looks like you got some visual essays here. Good amount of special features. Yeah, Radiance has just been killing it. Reversible cover art as well. Radiance has been killing it. Uh, art cards on the inside. Like I said, no shortage of art cards from any of these labels. I just need to get like a binder or something. And just like put all my art cards in it. From everything. Just have a big, big art card binder. All right, so that is that. And we have Killer's Mission right here. Show you the front, show you the back. And on the inside of this one, stuff's falling out. Uh, we have a booklet. So you got a booklet on this one with all kinds of cool stuff on the inside. At least I imagine it's cool. Yeah, I... Um, I have to get into this stuff, guys. Like I really do. I'm I've kung fu, Japanese stuff, Asian cinema is just a huge, huge gap for me. Huge gap for me. But I know it's it's big for a lot of people. So this is a really nice hard box, though, guys. I'm telling you, this is quality stuff. Radiance is really doing a lot to show the world that they have got the quality, just like everybody else. They're doing great stuff over there at Radiance Films. All right, so this next one, um, all that stuff was sent to me by MVD, the Radiant stuff, the Arrow stuff. Like I said, I will link it down below. It's all upcoming stuff. This one came out last month. I got this from Second Sight, and that is Inside. This is a Blu-ray release, and I just love Second Sight. I wanna, I wanna get everything they put out this year because they just, they're doing some great work. They're killing it, and I'm excited for the future of Second Sight. But Inside is a French uh, horror movie. 
um, about a, a lot of people said this was a Christmas movie, but this is about a break in. I think somebody breaks. It's like a home invasion of a woman that's pregnant and she has to fight these people off while she's pregnant or something or something happens. I'm sure a lot of torture and blood and, and stuff. Hopefully the baby turns out okay, though. Hopefully the baby's fine. Um, but I'm excited to watch this one. Don't spoil it for me. I haven't watched this yet. All right, but I'll show you the back right here. You got a great amount of special features. Even though it's a Blu-ray, I'm sure Second Sight is killing it with the Blu-rays as well. Uh, you got scissors. Oh, that's not good. Scissors with a baby involved. Oh, come on. Um, you got the Blu-ray case on the inside, so you do have a case in here. Usually with the 4Ks, you don't get the case. It's just like a, just like a little digi pack or something. You got some disc art with the scissors. And uh, no reversible cover art, though, on that. All right. I'm trying to get through this stuff, guys. All right, so we got inside. Big old booklet. Wah! All kinds of stuff. And, of course, this is like the fifth release in a row that's had art cards. But we got more art cards. I think the sixth release, actually. Art cards, get your art cards, get on water, hot. Um, I feel like the art cards, I don't want to look at them because they might spoil the movie for me. But I'm pretty sure this is still available. Maybe it's sold out, I don't know. But it's in a nice hard box. And I just love Second Sight, so I got it. And I'm excited to check this one out um, at some point. I'll be honest, I've been holding off on it because I'm just like, oh, I don't know if I'm in the mood for something so extreme right now because i do love high tension and it's compared to high tension uh but i am excited to check that one out all right let me take another drink of water all right guys let's let's keep this let's keep this train going we're almost home free uh we have the saw 10 film collection right here so i just wanted to show this one off again i did a complete unboxing on the channel if you missed it go check it out um but Look, I, I was kind of hard on this box set in that unboxing. It is cool that you have all the films in here. Ten movies on Blu-ray, ten movies on DVD. Some of them are, are the uncut versions as well, and you get a good amount of special features. Um, it's a 23-disc set. It's $72. I guess it's kind of worth it, but I just don't love the way that it's packaged. It's packaged like duty. Um, so, But I'm showing it off again. It's available now. By the time I put this out, it's available uh, came out on March the 5th. So there you go. Saw 10 film. The Columbia Classics uh, Volume 4 box set, which is now $140, guys. At least as of a couple days ago. And I paid $220 for it. That's how life works, guys. Um, but really nice box set. I did a complete unboxing of this on the channel. But I did get a chance to watch. I did get a chance to watch four of the six movies in this box set. So I wanted to, to talk about them real quick. Um, let me talk about this one first. Because it's the one I watched first. I watched Starman first. This is a movie directed by John Carpenter. Really cool movie directed by John Carpenter. Um, and kind of out of his comfort zone at that time. And he, I remember like he did a, he did a special feature in this. Um, I watched it after I watched the movie. And he just seemed very grateful he was given this opportunity. Because he was kind of stuck in that genre box. Um, which this is a genre film, but it's a different kind of genre film. Um, it's a romance story. It's a road movie. Um, a little bit of action. It's a sci-fi film for sure, but it kind of, it doesn't operate within the normal parameters of what John Carpenter was used to at this point in his career. So it was cool to get to see him uh, be excited about doing something that was a little bit outside of his comfort zone at the time. And he did a great job with this film, but I really enjoy this movie. Jeff Bridges, Karen Allen. I made this connection like while I was watching it, but the movie reminds me a lot of a movie called Meet Joe Black with Brad Pitt. So I wonder if they took, because that came out after, they probably took some inspiration from this movie when they made that because it is Jeff Bridges, you know, as an alien trying to acclimate to the world. So he kind of just, he doesn't know how to act. He doesn't know how to communicate properly. And that's kind of how Brad Pitt's character acts in, in, in Meet Joe Black. But Karen, uh, you know, Alan falls in love with him anyway. So there's a romance there with a alien that doesn't really know how to act properly on planet Earth. So, but it's a good movie. And I will say this 4K is probably one of the best 4Ks I've ever ever seen it looked so damn good it's from 1984 it's 40 years old by now 
And a Footloose just came out on 4K. 40-year-old film. I did a review for it. I was not hard on that movie on the 4K. I thought the 4K looked better than the Blu-ray uh, that came out. But you watch a movie like Starman, and you're like, what would, a foot, what would Footloose look like on 4K from Sony? Um, because Sony did such a great job with the 4K. Like, it looked so clean. Um, but there was a good amount of grain in it as well. It had that natural filmic quality to it. But, oh, my God, this 4K was immaculate. Like, it just looked like one of the best 4Ks I've ever seen. There's great colors in this. Like, the scene where he comes down and all the blue lights are surrounding him um, just looks phenomenal. So, Starman, I'm telling you, that's this is the best 4K in this box set of the ones that I've seen. Not that the other ones don't look great, but this one looked absolutely uh, fantastic. And um, I also watched His Girl Friday, black and white film. Looked great in 4K. Really fun, like early uh, 30s um, goofball comedy. It went in some directions I wasn't expecting, but I did enjoy um, that movie. And then I watched Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, which is probably the second best restoration of this set that I've seen. I thought this looked fantastic. It's a, you could tell it was, I think it was one of the first films in color. No, this is from 1967. Not one of the first films in color, but... Um, it just looked like that. I don't know if this was Technicolor or not, but man, did it look good. It was very bright and vivid and very colorful and just looked clean and nice. And it's not a movie that has a bunch of flashy like locations and settings. It's pretty much just in the parents' house. But I really enjoyed this movie a lot. It, it's a, a movie about a topic that still remains pretty relevant to this day. But to go back and watch this movie... And you can just see where people were in their mindsets back then. The messaging is still the same, but the way they convey the messaging is a little bit different than we would nowadays. But I still thought this movie was an incredibly sweet romance film um, and also an imp incredibly uh, important film thematically. So, And, and uh, you know, Sidney Poitier was excellent in this film. The whole cast was excellent here. Uh, Spencer Tracy, uh, Catherine Hepburn, everybody was great here. I, I really liked Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Um, Kramer versus Kramer. I watched this one on 4K. This is okay. I, I didn't love this movie. Um, I guess I was expecting something just a little bit different. It's a good movie. I enjoyed it. Uh, but um, I don't know. It, it was fine. It was a good kind of down, um, you know, depressing, uh, you know, romantic story about Meryl Streep and Dustin Hoffman getting a divorce and she runs off and comes back and wants custody of the kid. And he's like, no, I'm, I've been taking care of this kid this whole time. I deserve custody. Uh, so it's one of those types of movies. So it's not like, you know, fun for the whole family or anything. But I liked Kramer versus Kramer. I didn't think it was great, though. But Dustin Hoffman's great. He did a great job. Meryl Streep's great for the small parts that she's in it. She's really not in it uh, a ton. This is really Dustin Hoffman's movie. Uh, but it, it's an Academy Award winner. One Best Picture when it came out. And it looked really good on 4K. I did enjoy that. So just wanted to talk about the Columbia Classic sets, the, the movies that I watched. Haven't watched Sleepless in Seattle yet. I was wanting to watch that with the wife, and she... Hasn't been in the, in the mood to watch it. And Punch Drunk Love, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I was never a big fan of that one, so I was taking my time getting to it. I will watch it at some point. All right, let's let's uh, let's get into my Vinegar Syndrome stuff. Did you guys see that when I just flashed that across? Oh, the Vinegar Syndrome stuff. I'm so excited. I didn't, I didn't even unbox it yet. I wanted to do that on this episode of Physical Media Lives. All right. Oh, my goodness. There's nothing better than breaking into a new Vinegar Syndrome package. Let's rip out this freaking package. I'm getting crazy, guys. We're 45 minutes in, 43 minutes in, whatever, uh, to this. And uh, it's getting wild in here. I'm going to throw the box to the side. Everything's nice and bubble wrapped, and I appreciate that. So this is heavy because I did not just get Blu-rays and 4Ks, but I also did get a book. I felt like I was kind of tricked into getting this. I feel like this was a new book on their site. Um, but I got Neon Nightmares. Um, and this is the LA Thrillers of the 1980s. So I'm really into thrillers right now. I just want to get more into that genre. And this is all the great ones of the 80s. This is kind of like a deep dive into that genre in the 80s. So I'm excited to check this out and, and read up about it and check out more of those films because I love the movie that's on the cover, Body Double is such an excellent film. Um, but there was like 15 copies of this yet, of this left. 
So I ordered it because I thought it was going really quick. And then, then they ended up putting more back in stock. So it may still be on there if you want to check it out. But I'm excited to get into this. I need to read more. So this kind of gives me an excuse to if it's like movie related. Maybe I'll get into it. Um, and then I guess I'll show this one off next. I'm really excited to check this one out. This is a Paramount title. Phase 4. Um, on 4k. I may do a review of this one if I check it out soon, but you got ants all over it I actually now that I'm seeing this up close. This actually looks really nice and phase four is embossed down there So that's pretty cool um, So yeah, this looks really nice. I, I dig this release for sure And let's take it out of this little box. So this is the same kind of packaging as the um, uh, Dr. Hitchcock set and also Texas Chainsaw Massacre just kind of a side loading slip box which is cool. And you got a, a nice slip cover right here. I think this is the original poster for this movie. I could be wrong. Got some more artwork on the back. And uh, this is a 4K. And this is a film by Saul Bass, who was a graphic designer, early graphic designer. So I think this was his only movie he directed. And it looks like you have a lot of good special features here. Probably a, a documentary and some new interviews and stuff. Um... Let's see. So you got the preview version and the theatrical version. So yeah, you got a, a brand new documentary with this one. So yeah, I'm excited to check this one out. And Vinegar Syndrome always does a great job with their 4Ks, guys. Like I said, I just watched Dr. Hitchcock, and it looked excellent on 4K. Southern Comfort looked excellent on 4K. Um, so I am excited to dive into Phase 4 on 4K. Like I said, I, I like the artwork now that I'm seeing it up close. And this is a three disc set, guys. You got the 4K disc right there with the ants on it. You flip it and you got the Blu-ray of the movie. And then you also have the Blu-ray with the special features. And uh, you got a nice little booklet here on the inside. Oh, there's two booklets here. Hold on. Yeah, nice little booklet on the inside. Storyboards, I think is what it is. You got um, reversible cover art with the original poster. That's freaking cool. Look at that. Really neat. All right. Put that back in the slip cover. We got uh, another booklet right here. Good stuff in there, I imagine. But yeah, Phase 4, I may do a full review for this. Let me know if you want me to in the comments section. That'll probably determine whether or not I do it, if you made it this far. But there you go. That's a, that's a February title. Excited to watch that one. And this one I'm really excited to check out. I got a couple Westerns to check out in this haul, and that is Five Card Stud. So I went ahead and got this because it seemed pretty cool. I think this is a Vinegar Syndrome Labs title. And this has Dean Martin and Robert Mitchum from Night of the Hunter. So very excited to check this out. Two classic actors in a Western together, put out from Vinegar Syndrome. Um, that is just a match made in heaven right there. I think this is another uh, Paramount title as well. So Paramount, they just do a great job with their catalog, guys. Like they, They're putting tons of stuff out themselves. They're licensing stuff out to Kino Lorber, to Vinegar Syndrome, to Arrow Video. Like Paramount just, they care about their catalog and it, it being preserved. So I appreciate that at a Paramount. And we'll zoom in right there. You got the synopsis, you got the special features, all that stuff at the bottom. Open this up. You got some cool disc art right there. And uh, another uh, booklet on the inside. Or no, this is the first booklet here. Great stuff. I wish Vinegar would give you some posters though. That would be cool. And then you flip this around and you have uh, the original theatrical poster. When is this movie from? 1968. 108 minutes or 103 minutes. So, very exciting stuff, guys. Five card stud on Blu-ray from Vinegar Syndrome. All right, so that is all of my new release stuff. Uh, let's get into my subscriber mail. I've got a couple of boxes. I've been holding on to these for for a little bit, uh, for probably three to four weeks, some of these boxes. I actually need to go back to the P.O. box this week because I haven't been in a couple of weeks. But uh, let's see. Let's see what we got here. This is, I don't know if this is says who it's from. Maybe there's a note in here or something. Uh, this feels very light. So I don't think it's a movie. I think it's something different. 
Oh my goodness, somebody sent me a Jaws ornament. <laughs> so I can save this for the tree next year. Freaking awesome. I think they just wanted to hear me say, Jaws. I got a Jaws ornament for the tree. What do you guys think of that? Very cool. Thank you so much. Whoever sent me that. Was there a note in there? I think somebody, somebody might have sent me a, a message about that. I'm not sure. Um, and this next box, guys, comes from the infamous Ryan Nar, And uh, he's always sent me a bunch of stuff for the channel to unbox. So I am excited. He always packages very well also. Um, all right, let's, let's get into this. How do I get into this? Let's try it this way. Oh, my goodness. I need to learn to start doing this before I get on camera. Well, what's the fun in that? Don't you, you guys like to see me struggle, don't you? This is Physical Media Lives episode three, for Christ's sake. The struggle is real. And oh my goodness, this thing is loaded full of DVDs. Let's see what we got here. I got three Blu-rays here. Let's see. Transformers. I had this one, Ryan. This part of the steel. But Ryan sends me a lot of stuff I have. Um, oh, Fright Night 2. I think this is the remake. I would love for this to be the original, Ryan. I wish you sent me the original. Because I don't think it has a Blu-ray. And that would have been super cool. Uh, Fright Night 2. I haven't seen this one. Uh, I do have the remake. Uh, that came out in 2011, I think, with Colin Farrell and Anton Yelchin. So I'm happy to have that, honestly. Thank you. Pacific Rim. I do have this one on 4K, but thank you for sending that to me on Blu-ray. Let's see what else we have on a DVD. We have Running With Scissors. Is that Alec Baldwin there? Um, I haven't seen that movie. We have Woman, Though Art Loose. Loosed? I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that. Uh, we have Daddy's Little Girls, a Tyler Perry film. Uh, we have Get Smart with uh, with uh, Steve Carell and, and The Rock. I don't know if I ever watched this. I always thought it, it didn't look great, so I never watched it. Uh, we got Scary Movie. I actually do need that in the collection. So thank you for that. Beverly Hills Chihuahua. I need that in the collection, too. Everybody needs Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Uh, Sorority Row. I think that's the, the remake. Um, I don't have that, so cool. Maybe I'll watch that at some point. Uh, Nebraska. I, I think doesn't this have a Criterion or a Blu-ray or something? This is a what? Who directed this? Alexander Payne. I've heard some good things about it though. Uh, so thank you. I can do bad all by myself. She really can. Look at her. She can really do bad all by herself. We got Kill Switch with Steven Seagal. Is this the last great Seagal film? Let me know in the comment section. We also have Hoodwinked on DVD. Um, we have World Trade Center. I don't have that in the collection. That's cool. Um, we have White Chicks. My wife would love this. I don't think I have this either. Um, she loves this movie. This is like my wife's favorite comedy of all time. Um, we got Medea Goes to Jail. Hell yes. We got, uh, what the hell? Skeleton Man with Michael Rooker and Casper Van Dien. Hell yeah. That sounds awesome. Um, oh, this never ends. Uh, Bridget Jones Diary on DVD. This box is like the never-ending box. This is a four-film collection of Dracula films. We got Fangs, Bram Stoker's, Dracula's Guest, Bled, and Dracula's Curse all in this. And lastly, we have Tyler Perry's Good Deed. So a lot of Tyler Perry movies um in this in this pack but there you go guys that's that's this subscriber mail unboxing a lot of movies here a lot of movies showed off in in today's episode of physical media liz but thank you all so much for watching hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't already we talk about physical media on this channel now i did not cover my criterion flash sale stuff in this video because i did a separate unboxing video earlier in the week so if you missed that go check it out i'll try to link that at the end of this video. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe, turn on those bell notifications for all future videos. And like I said, I will be linking everything that I talked about in this video, all the new releases upcoming down below in the description. So check out those links if you want any of those titles 
Um, and, and check me out on all my social media links down below. Turn on bell notifications for all future videos and reviews and all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time.